Hey guys, this is Jacob from RoboFlow, here today with Joseph to talk about computer vision and agriculture. So, Joseph, what are some of your thoughts about computer vision and agriculture and why it's sort of a uniquely suited domain for computer vision to be applied today? Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, even before diving into uh, the computer vision part of agriculture, let's just take a step back and realize that agriculture has actually been at the forefront of a lot of technological waves, okay? So, for example, um, we talk about self-driving cars quite a bit, but let me hit you with this. When do you think we used the first self-driving tractor? Um, I don't know, maybe like 2005? 2005. 2005. I mean, I mean, just for context, like self-driving cars weren't even a part of the conversation until like 2010. Yeah, but I mean, yeah maybe that's a little aggressive, but I'll, I'll, I'll stick to maybe, maybe 2010. Okay. Say. Yeah. Um, John Deere reports having used self-driving tractors in some capacity in 1996. No way. Yeah, but but what's what's well, that's a good example of a early adopter. In fact, those were GPS based at the time and not vision based. Um, so there's a little bit of a caveat. And when we say self driving, they were mostly just going down the rows rather than like actually turning around and fully fully autonomous self driving. Sure, sure. But now that said, I mean to your to your question of like why computer vision in agriculture, aside from agriculture being a place of surprisingly fast technology adoption, I mean. Agriculture has all the raw elements to be um, improved with visual senses, right? So think about it like this, like from the time of planting and identifying that your rows are equally spaced to identifying even that seeds are like the right seeds uh, that you even would want to use in a, in a given field, that when you want to monitor um, a given growing season, you want to make sure that there's not weeds, that there's not pests in your given field. Uh, and if there are, maybe you can run automated machines to identify, herbis or identify weeds and spray them with herbicides. You can run drones over top of tens of thousands of acres, right? And start to get a sense of what's happening on the ground. Even after harvest, you want to identify the quality of the crop. See if there's any deficiency, see which one goes to supermarket. Um, and then of course, when from there forward, even just in the food and supply chain generally, I mean, we've talked about uh, manufacturing in vision before. I mean. We can link that video in the description, but from food forward, I mean, you're talking about all the same things that make manufacturing being a great process. But agriculture has so many places to be improved with visual inspection that it's only natural that automating these processes, that making them be more efficient, that uh, adding some component of rigor um, through, through machine vision improves margins and improves quality while you know, keeping costs under control. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And um, is there anything about you know the computer vision technology in combination with the agriculture space uh, that you think is unique? So here, here's just kind of one one idea that I, I'm sort of having, but you know that agriculture at large has been taken down to be a largely repetitive process in order to be able to monitor yields and kind of uh, more regularly um, monitor the way that um, fields and everything is working. Um, do you think that that fact has um, sort of an impact on the ability for computer vision to generalize into the space? Or how do you think about that? Yeah. Or is so, it more, more complicated than that? No, no, I think that that's a good point, right? That like the fact that you have repetitive high number of examples that you can collect and surface, like many crops look generally the same, so identifying anomalies, or I guess row crops, so I'm speaking, look pretty similar. So identifying anomalies is can be a relatively uh, easier task, so to speak. I mean, the other thing that's notable is that like agriculture is at such a large scale a lot of the time that small differences in, in uh, success, um, like small percentage changes have big impacts on costs or profits. Um, and so like, I mean, if you just improve production by one, 2%, that can be pretty dramatic for a given operation. Um, and so those operational improvements have, have a big thing to do with it. I mean. One of the examples that I really like, though, is that uh, one, like a RoboFlow customer, actually, um, what they do, um, they're a company called Barn Owl Drones, and they are interested in using vision to assist with the faster production of not only like up and coming like challenger crops, but also traditional row crops. One of the things that they do is they actually fly their drone over top of farmers' fields as drone operators. And then they have these uh, hundreds of hours of video of, of the fields. 
and they want to know where should they be spending their time to uh, go hand pull weeds. So they're not using herbicides and they need to use their time wisely. Mm -hmm. And so when there's a weed in a given field, you could before, before the barn owl service, you could, I guess, visually inspect and drive by and look at all these places. Or with mm -hmm. the drone, you could watch all that video footage. But what they're doing is they're processing and identifying the GPS coordinates of a given field that has a weed in it and then only using their time there, which dramatically increases their ability to help farmers increase their yields. Yeah. And it's something like that where the thing I really like about this is they are they started as a two person team and they're already dramatically changing the way in which their growers produce their given crops. And it's those sorts of like empowerment that you'd be thinking that that's like a, a John Deere, Case IH, Pioneer yeah. sort yeah. of innovation. And it's a technology that's accessible to challengers to, to make a big difference. Yeah, that, that's really exciting. And um, are there kind of any other uh, use cases that sort of immediately come to mind for you? I know some people have started to use it um, to like kind of identify a disease, say like at kind of a more zoomed in level, you can look at an individual plant and determine what sort of disease um, it might be suffering from or, or it might be healthy. Um, yeah, but plant phenotyping, I mean, in the lab, identifying given um, experiments and, and, and yields and uh, zoomed in views from even just microscopic, like, you know, microscope, microscopic level. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, another customer that uh, thinks through uh, doing maintenance more effectively uh, and identifying from visual data, uh, make and model of given machinery and heavy equipment so that they can better pair technicians to either go to the field or even do tele help. To, to do that. Um, and so for example, like to be more specific, like if you're a technician, you might be trained in one specific type of machinery. And if someone sends in an image that you can't tell if it's that type of machinery or, you know, you know more than the average bear as it relates to servicing technologies, but you don't know this specific machine. Well, if you can have a guide that basically imagine it's like a guidebook that turns to the exact right page and based on your existing knowledge and you know that it's this specific machine, you can start to expand the service area that you can have or the machines that you can start to provide quality for. So, I mean, um, agriculture is sort of shorthand for a bunch of different parts of the economy, manufacturing, for food production, for food processing, um, and each of those places have unique areas to apply vision. Definitely, definitely. Um, I wholeheartedly agree there. Um, so let, let's just say I was just getting started out and you know I, I have um, some agriculture um, business that I'm taking care of, but I, and I want to get started with the vision. What, what are some of the things I should be uh, thinking about um, as I'm getting into it and like some considerations that I might want to have as I sort of embark on um, getting, getting vision into, into my regular workload? It's kind of a fun question because I've been pushing my dad and his farm to, to get going in, in vision now. And so like all these questions of like, what should he be doing is, is immediately top of mind for me. Um, and I mean, it, it comes down to a lot of the same fundamentals of how to get started in vision in any domain, which is have a narrowly impactful defined problem. And so like those things kind of sound oxymoronic. I mean, narrow as in like a really clear thing that you want to identify. So maybe one specific pest or, you know, one specific weed or uh, something like this. Um, and uh, we're seeing a lot, a lot of that. Um, having a... Uh, a place where you already have some amount of imagery or video data. So barn owl, right? Like they were already using drones. And a lot of agriculture is for spraying, for sensing, for things like this. Um, and so like a place where you already have some established image data um, is key. Um, as it comes to like understanding that data, it might require some expertise, right? In other words, like identifying what a weed looks like versus like what a healthy crop looks like, a pest. And that might like, we have the plant doc data set on public.roboflow.com. And there's a lot of like uh, areas if you comb through that data set where there's things that I wouldn't know um, as you know a lay person as a, well, I guess I have a bit more, even someone that has some experience in agriculture, I wouldn't know all of the maladies in that given data set. And so thinking through um, something that plays to your domain advantage and your domain strength that you can identify and start to train a machine are all relevant things I would think about. And then the last thing I would think about is make sure that you, when you start to think about building a model, that you do not think of it as like an endpoint and you're done. 
Um, you can deploy a model, but you need to continue to improve that model. Continue to collect new data every growing season. Continue to look at new pests, different lighting conditions. All these sorts of things are what feel like edge cases, but can add up pretty quickly. And um, you know, model drift, meaning your model starts to not perform as well as the day that you built it. Um, and so when you ultimately getting started with, with um, vision and agriculture is, is thinking through a well-defined problem, having images uh, or video file available, having the expertise required to either process or label or think through that data, and then also recognizing that it's an ongoing process, that every year, every month, every week, you wanna be making steps towards improving your model with better data and better training. Um, and those are all questions we think about quite pretty heavily at, at Robofill, by making that entire process easy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know, I think this has been a really good kind of encapsulation of uh, computer vision and agriculture today. And I guess, I don't know, do you have any closing thoughts uh, before we wrap up here? I mean, we're excited about supporting creators in any space and agriculture as a personal place for, for us um, and, and my, my family. So be sure to, to get in touch if we can help. Um, Roboflow.com, we have a place where you can get in touch with myself on the sales team or anyone on the solutions architecture team. And um, we're happy and eager to see what, what we can build. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, this video and our YouTube channel generally. We'll be able to put out more content on improving models in agriculture and, and elsewhere. Um, thanks so much for tuning in and thanks for the discussion.